Hello everyone. So we're going to continue the timbali grooves in my book today with a groove called the cha-cha-cha. This is a really great dance groove. Uh, I've played it for years with all kinds of wedding bands and symphony things and show, you know, Broadway shows. It's really common. It's a dance groove that um, I started out playing in salsa clubs on timbales. So the gist of this groove is one thing. It's the relentless drive of a quarter note. So this. All right? And if you can keep that in your head at all times, you'll be fine. So the section, um, again, the percussion section in a Latin band that, that plays cha-cha-cha would be bongos, timbales, congas, someone probably playing wiro, which is a wood scraper or a metal scraper. Uh, that's relentless, like tsh, 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 tsh. you know, you've all heard that. That was a bad impression. All right, um, but the main thing to remember is that drive, always a four drive, a little bit on top of the beat. We'll talk about that in a second, about some different tempos. Um, and also the cowbells are very important. Now throughout these exercises, you can change the bells you're playing on. I have uh, several dual bell, in other words, two bells playing in these exercises. You feel free to change those pitches. I'll do that some for you today. It's important to be able to do that. And it keeps it interesting. But again, the main thing, once again, is that quarter note drive. We always have to have that. All right? So the first groove, number one, on page 104, has this eighth note pulse with the quarter notes being accented and then these eighth notes being filled in like this. So that can be played um, with the low bell first or the high bell first, like this. Okay, and remember to use an arcing motion with your wrist to play that. Don't, don't use your arm like that, up and down. Use your wrist. It'll be much more um, reliable, tempo-wise, anyway. Okay, so... The left hand then is playing this kind of mock um, conga pattern. What one, one. All right, just to fill in. Don't play that too loud because the conga player is going to be playing that. You don't want to wipe him or her out. So this is what that groove sounds like. One, two. And if I reverse the bells, it sounds like this. One, two. Okay, and as I started there, I wanted to show you, you could play all four of those clicks on the rim so, it gets exhausting, but you can do that if you want to reinforce that quarter note. All right, so number two now gets into this changing bell kind of thing where one hand is roaming around and the other hand is just playing those straight quarter notes. So I hope I'm clear on that. If I play this very slowly, it sounds like this. One, two, three, and four, and. Once again, it's okay to switch bells like this. One, two. As long as 
once that right hand's going, you, that left hand is free to roam, okay? So let's talk a little about tempos, like I mentioned earlier. Sometimes you have to play really slow cha-chas. When I used to play these, um, well, they're called society gigs. When I lived in New York, we'd go out to Long Island, play a big band gig. Uh, they paid really well, but you were playing for dancers. In other words, um, maybe music they, that would have been popular in the 1940s, you know, even 1920s uh, and 30s. So that would be like foxtrots and, and cha-chas, begins and, and all these uh, sambas, but all kinds of sambas, not, not the samba we, we consider now. So all these things required a really authentic feel and sound that the dancers were used to. So the cha-chas would definitely be slower. Like I remember we did like a tune called T for Two, and that was really slow. And it's easy to rush a cha-cha because it's so driving and, you know, that quarter note. And the tempo is in the nooks and crannies, so it's, it's hard to keep steady. So what I did was I, tr I started to do little notes in between to keep me from rushing, all right? So you can try that too. And if you look at number three, you'll see this pattern. So by playing that fast with my right hand, as fast as you probably can, it keeps you from pushing ahead. So with the rest of the kit, it sounds like this. Alright, so that's a strategy to think about if you have to play a really slow cha-cha. That also works for a, a rhythm called the bolero, even though a bolero is a little more on the drums and less on the bells. But maybe you can open up during the chorus. But boleros are, are some of the slowest uh, grooves you'll play on a, on a Latin gig, okay? Now, if I wanted to play that faster, I could just leave out a note. So in other words, I could leave out that first sixteenth note and the right hand would sound like this. Let's attempt that, so... Alright, and once again, as long as that bell pattern is going, that left hand can do some variations, like I did there. Now, number four is a tough one. So, uh, this can be slow or fast. We'll play it slow first. So, one, two, three, four. And a little faster. One, two, three. So that's number four, slow and fast. Now, number five and six use the clave. There's normally not a present clave being played in cha-cha, uh, cha-cha-cha. You, you can do it, um, but normally it's not being played by anyone. But I put it here just so you can hear what it might sound like. So we'll go really slow so you can hear it. So it's one, two, three, four. I did there I started with the groove written and then I did several variations which you could try so I'm improvising with my left hand but not my right hand that's the trickier it's kind of like playing jazz you know when you first start out 
just doing, you know, ding, 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 and working on your left hand coordination. Then eventually you change that right hand pattern a little and you you change, you know, your left hand is comping. So you develop that coordination. So it's important at first to play these bell patterns correctly. All right. So if you look at the next one, number six, it's the same idea. It's just a little, little harder. So it's. Again, with variations. So please try that. So the next rhythm we're going to do is called the Kunga. It's also from page 104 in my book. And it's identified by an upbeat accent on the end of two. So you'll hear that. I'll be playing it on one of the drums. So here's number one, slow. One, two, one, two, three. Now a little faster. One, two, one, two, three. Here's conga rhythm number two, slow. One, two, one, two, three. And conga rhythm number two, fast. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Here's conga rhythm number three, slow. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> This is conga rhythm number three, fast. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> This is conga rhythm number four, slow. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> Thank you.
This is number four fast. One, two, one, two, three. <laughs> The next rhythm from page 104 is called Wawanko. It's a folkloric Cuban rhythm. It uses the rumba clave, and I'm going to play the little melodic passage that gets played on the drums. That sounds like this. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now, Wawanko is usually played by the Kungas. It's not normally played like that on the timbales. But I've included these rhythms since if you just are playing timbales or drum set, you can play Wawanko. So this is exercise number five, slow. One, two, one, two, three. And this is number five fast. One, two, one, two, three. This is Wawanko, exercise six, slow. One, two, one, two, three. This is a little faster. One, two, one, two, three. The next rhythm is Mozambique. This is number seven from page 104, slow. One, two, one, two, three, four. Faster, one, two, one, two, three. This is Mozambique from page one oh four, number eight, slow. One, two, one, two, three, four. And faster, one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> 